Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. In this video today we're going to take a look at setting up a main menu, setting up basic buttons, and trying to keep it easy on ourselves so we don't have to spend hours working on one particular button. And in my previous videos we've worked on like a, an introductory splash screen and room transitions like something that makes a little fade in, fade out effect. So I'm presuming you've already done that, at least if you're following along and you know, following along to the letter here. But otherwise, if you're not, if you just want to get some information out of this, I hope you do. So let's kind of take a look at where we're at and then we'll take a look at where we need to. So my game right now starts with a fade in to this splash screen and then it waits a couple seconds and then it fades out. And then it heads to this main menu. And since the last video, all I did was set up a 1080p graphic uh, that was just a replacement for the red screen that we had in the previous video. So I just set up a main menu sprite that gets displayed instead of just the red background that got displayed previously. So other than that, that's where we're at. Uh, I'm not going to re-go over all these things. You can watch that other previous video. So now we're kind of needing to set up our button system and figure out how to you know, go from room to room. And things I want to figure out, I, just things to do up front here, is that we're going to have four buttons. We're going to have a quit game button, which will quit the game immediately. We're going to have a, a button that takes you back to that splash screen, because, you know, that's the credits, basically. Uh, just, just to keep it simple, just, okay, go back to that one more time, and then come back to the main menu again. Uh, and then we'll also have one, at least for playing the game, like playing the hub. Oh, maybe there'll be three buttons. Three or four buttons, definitely, for sure. Uh, and if you wanted to add anything more, of course, you're able to do that. So let's, uh, let's take a look at setting up those. Okay, so you can set up your buttons slightly different if you want to, at least on the size. We're going to make a generic button here. I've already called it Main Menu Button SPR. And I'm right now, 600 by 200 is just good enough uh, just for everything that we're going to be accomplishing here. So let me edit this. And I'm going to try to keep the color scheme fairly similar to what you see or what you did see in the, the previous video a minute ago. And I'm not going for perfection per se, so like if this is off by a pixel right here, nobody wants to watch me putter around. At least I'm pretty confident nobody wants to watch me putter around with all this stuff. So and it just it's tricky. It can be it can get a little intricate here trying to make sure you line up everything. And I'm just gonna you know hell, I'm just gonna just go in here and fill in everything blue and just call it a day. At least on that outline here. I think, I think I've covered everything there. And so now I'm good with this, at least on this end. And then I'm going to create a second image for this. Uh, and I can go back in here and edit this and just copy paste, control C, control V. And all I'm going to do is reverse the colors on this. So it just it doesn't matter what I pick here as long as, uh, as long as I go back and I figure it out like, oops, not like that, like this. So you have the two images. This will be the off image and this will be the on image. And maybe, maybe instead of a black outline, so you won't be able to see the black on black there, uh, the, tr the contrast issues, I'll make it a little more white so it's a little more obvious that that's the button that's been moused over. <coughs> excuse me. Hey, excuse me. And so the last part here, <clears throat> man, goodness, is this, for this sprite, I'm going to go in and tinker with the origin. I'm going to make this centered so that when I put it in the room, it'll be, in, you know, it'll be where it needs to be. When I draw the text, it'll be drawn... Uh, center justified so it'll be right in the middle of the button so I want to do a middle middle center here for that so I can center that button sprite but other than that the sprite itself is done and then it's just a matter of setting up the four three or four objects that we're gonna have okay so to set up the button and start working on that we're gonna set up a base class for this at least for the main menu button let me just create this object first here I'm gonna call it main menu button base class and just I'm gonna spell it right and it doesn't need you know, I guess we're gonna use that sprite as the basics the basis here main menu make sure I put yeah click the main menu I just don't know why they can't make this a little more readable but it's the year 2023 almost but anyway this thing's been around for t <laughs> many many years but anyway so this base class so we're gonna keep track of what is the basic functionality of this so the basic functionality of this is uh, in a create event, I'm going to write some code for this thing, and I'm just going to say that, just to be safe here, I'm going to say the image index is zero, and that's the, the zero index is this one here, is the default not selected part of this, and I'm going to say image speed is equal to zero as well, because I don't want this thing animating at all, because I want the mouse over to, to modify that, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do a mouse, uh, mouse enter. 
And I'm going to say, in this case, when the mouse when the mouse goes into that the bounding box of that sprite, I want it to uh, change the image index to something proper, like this this one here. And then when I leave that situation, when I duplicate this for mouse leave. Then I want it also to set up so that I go, oh, okay, put it back to the zero state that it originally was. So then one of the one of the buttons, as long as the buttons are distinctly placed in your room, those buttons will have that kind of opportunity. So then the the the, the thought here is okay. So that works. Uh, another thing uh, another thing to think about here. Oh, this is where things are going to get slightly tricky here. It's like, well, what kind of text do I want to draw? And so for right here, I'm just going to say text. I'm going to call it input. I'm going to put it in. Eh, I won't make it in big text. I don't know here, but I'll say text is equal to, uh, you know, basically I'll just call it base class. So you can, if you, or just uh, oops or something like that. If I forget to change the text when I derive my classes, when I create the actual buttons from this template, it'll print out oops, and then I know oops. Yeah, I I know actually oops, I screwed up here. And so, um, okay, cool. So what I need to do now is to be able to draw that text on the screen and draw my sprite, and then we can test it out as a base class, and then we can uh, figure out how to make it work for the other types. So I say, okay, my draw event. And I go, okay, what do I want to do? I want to draw whatever button is supposed to be drawn in, on the screen at a certain position, and then I want to draw that text. And right now I'm just, I just want to draw the text. I don't want to do anything special with it. So I'm just going to say draw at x, y, I'm going to draw whatever that text variable is. So that, you know, the text variable is coming from here, and then here is the text that prints out. So let's try this out in the main menu room, just to drag, you know, you're not going to want to do this, let me put the instance layer here, you're not going to want to do this, generally speaking, once you get your game going, like to set up the base classes, because you're going to want the derived stuff, but let's just see what it says. And the WYSIWYG editor is not going to give you a good indication of what the game actually does. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> we're gonna have to change this so you're not looking at the splash screen every moment of every day here, so just to kind of focus. But for right now, it's already there, so let's spend an extra two seconds. So here you go. And so there's the button. Oh, it's really not drawing anything. It kind of is, but it kind of isn't. And you can see that because it's actually drawing black on top of everything, and it's drawing my oops. At least it's kind of working, right? So let's kind of let's 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 and then and then the last thing I'm gonna want to do here. Just to kind of give a understanding to anyone who might use this later on, and it might be even you later, 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 is to set up an event for uh, key. I'm sorry, mouse, uh, mouse left pressed, and this is where you would set up. What do you want to do? And I'll put a comment in here, and I say override this with the action that should occur. when the left mouse button is pressed. Well, I guess, and then say while this button is active. And so that could mean a lot of things. In this, if, I, if it's the quit menu, I want to quit the game. If it is a something else, I want to do something else, or go to a different room, or whatever. Or if it's a clicky game, add one to your total, or whatever it is. So in this case, just as, as a button base class, we're just going to define it as such as just give it no behavior because you're going to derive that and, and figure it out somewhere else. And so with that said and done, uh, with everything else, what else do we want to be able to do? In this draw event now, we kind of, we talked it out here, and I go, well, now I want to set up a font, and I'm just, I'm not going to set up a crazy font, but I'm going to set up just a main menu button font. And I'm just going to use the defaults for a lot of the stuff. I'll make the font. I'll make the font size a little bigger. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's. I guess that's about right. Uh, so main menu button font. I'm just going to copy that so I have it. So then coming back to where I write my code here, I'll just say draw set font. I'll pop that guy in, and I'll say draw set color. And I will say, oh, and this is where the the this is where the the color that gets drawn matters. So I'm going to say if my image index is equal to zero, then I want to draw with the blue. But if it's not, if it's uh, the other one, I want to draw, it, I guess, white. And we'll see what it looks like. And we'll see. And again, I, as long as I have something working, I'm going to move on. 
I'm not necessarily worried about all the little details, but I want to get you to where you have at least a hook to change the details as you need to. Two other things we need to worry about. Draw V align, draw set the alignment. We want to make sure it's all drawn out centered. And I think it's VA center. Maybe not VA, is it FA? FA center. And so I want to align horizontally and vertically right before, and I think I can use the, I can't necessarily, I don't want to go back which one's middle and which one's center. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I can find out here. You know, like, okay, FA, the, the H align uses center, and then the middle is, the FA middle is used for the other one here. So for V align, this will be FA middle. I just want to, just to be, I guess just to be 100% consistent here. And let's try this out now. Oh shoot, hold on, let me let me show you guys how you could do this. Here, hold on. Stop that. And then what I want to do here is go into here and say, oh, the main menu is now the how do I do well, how do I drag this? How do I do this? It's been a while. There. The main menu room is now the thing that starts up since we know the splash screen works. Wow, we're already seven minutes into this uh part of the video here. Okay, so so there you go. So there it draws oops in blue. And then when I mouse over, it draws it in white. So the color matters depending on the mouse over of this. So now we're, we have a pretty good uh, we have a pretty good template, so we can start creating the other objects in our scene. So then, how do we work with this now? So the, again, this base class is not meant to be actually kept around. It's meant to be just kind of like if you know if you're used to object oriented programming, this is the base class, and we're going to be creating derived classes. So another thing I want to do here as we get more complicated, I want to set up groups for this. And I'll say this is the group for the main menu for objects and all that. And there's all there's multiple ways you can go about doing this, but I want to say, okay, the main menu button class probably belongs in there. And we can, these other things can be moved also eventually too. But I want to say, okay, I have my main menu button class. I want to create an object, a new object. Uh, the hardest part for me is always finding the thing. And I go, okay, I'll just call it main menu quit button. All right, so I so now I have this new button. And now with this, uh, what I want to do is I want to parent to the to this other object that we just created. So all the code we wrote kind of comes for free. And so uh, main menu and then say, okay, main menu button base class. So look at all this cool stuff pops in already for us. And so now, uh, what, do, what, what would I want to do to, to, you know, to change the behavior? Well, I could go in here. I, am I allowed to touch this? I'm not allowed to touch this as is, but I'm allowed to say, oh, okay, cool. I want to, I want to basically open the parent event, or I, I can inherit or override. And in this case, I want to uh, inherit. Okay, so what this means is... When this event inherited gets run, it basically says call the parent's uh, create event. So this will go up the chain, and I, I don't know how, how easy it is to find, but I guess I can go here and show and go, and just show when I set this up, it'll set the text variable and it'll set this other stuff up. But then what do we wanna do that's more custom than that? At least in this situation, I wanna change what happens with my text when I click on it. And I guess I want to change just before. I also want to make sure the sprite is a, the sprite is the same. But then I want to call this first, and then I want to say quit game. I'll put it all in caps just to have it. So you want to make sure you call this first because if you do this first, this will the event override will will blow out whatever you put in here. So right now everything else, if I just popped in this quit game button into the room instead of what I had a minute ago here, and just put this down here somewhere down near the bottom and run this. Because of the way inheritance works, you will see that the quit game button is already there, and and, and, it, and everything kind of works out exactly like I want to, so it's going to be pretty easy to finish up the rest of the deal here. Okay, so what do I want to do when I quit the game? I want, and that they say that is what this, uh, the left pressed event is supposed to be for, because now it gives me a comment that tells me what I should do, and I go, I should override this with the action I want to perform. And so, and I'm going to keep it simple for now. We can always add things later on, but I'm going to definitely override this one. And I'm going to say, well, what do I, because I'm, I'm overriding no behavior whatsoever. I'm not doing anything in that situation, but what do I want to do? I want to do a game end. We could add fades and all sorts of stuff, but for right now, I don't want to get too far. Maybe I'll pop back here at the end of the video if you care enough to kind of keep going with it. But I go, so game end.
there's my game there's my room and then i quit you know i do whatever i click 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 but if i click inside here the game ends just like i expect it to that's a good uh, good button class for the for the quit game so now let's take a look at you know kind of doing the same kind of idea i can duplicate this and now instead of being main menu quit, I could be main menu credits. I get rid of that six, I don't know where that comes from. And so you gotta make sure your game maker is fun for setting things up and then not taking you where you think you're gonna go. So you gotta make sure you're there. See how it's a whole different thing. You're gonna be overriding the wrong object. But here, instead of quit game, I want to be, I wanna say credits. And what do I wanna do when I do left pressed? Well, I wanna do, a, at least for right now, I wanna do a room go to. And I want to say room go to splash screen. Oops, once I type it out, it'll let me know. Splash screen room. And I, we don't have any, any special effects from the previous video just yet, but we just want to get the base behavior going before we add the, the specialness to Oh, and I forgot to put the thing in the room because that's just what I do here. So let's see, main menu room, and then I can put the credits button in right underneath it. And now you can see that these two objects are, they're sharing the same code, but they have completely independent behaviors. And so now you can see quit game. Quit game will quit the game, and credits will take me back to the credits. And then we'll wait eight seconds or so, and then it'll bring me right back to the main menu again. So the only thing left to do are kind of like those fade in, fade out effects, and we'll take care of that once we have everything working for real. So you can see, that, and then the quit game quits the game like you're expecting it to. So the final button then would be kind of another, you know, duplicate this one one more time over and say now we want to actually play the game, whatever your, I'm just calling it hub world or whatever, but you know, that's just whatever you want it to be. And I want to make sure now go back in here and just say, okay, play, play game or start game, I guess, depending on how you're setting everything up. So I can, that's my text, the draw event can stay the same, the mouse over, mouse leave, and now the left pressed, what do I want to do? Well, I want to go to the hub world room, which I don't have just yet, which I will set up in a moment here. And so there's my room go to, there's my hub world. And so I need to set up this room and I can do so, create my room. And I'll call it, I gotta make sure I, whatever I just put in here for my other object here, I'm gonna borrow that and call and rename that. The hub world room, okay. I know it's, it's world and then room, but hey, that's the way Game Maker, that's the way Game Maker runs. And so I want to make sure I do 1080p over here. I want to make sure everything matches up as we expect. And this can be, just be a black screen because this will be a future video for how to start getting the, you know, the hub world going. But now you can see that there. And then uh, I got to make sure I put the object in the room. Got to make sure. Here we go. So I got my three buttons. I don't think there's anything else. I'm already forgetting if I am in my old age here. Uh, but you can see now with everything else put into place, there's my start game, there's my credits, there's my quit game. Boom, 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 and I can go, and then start game will take me to this other uh, this other room. And if it makes you feel any better or whatever, you can change the background color just to have it, again, kind of like that, just to have it slightly different, I suppose. We can make it just a little red. Oops, what room am I in? Hold on, let me make sure I'm, oh boy, let me make sure I'm in the right room here. I'm not in the right room. I'm in the main menu where I should be in the hub world doing that. Whoopsie, that's no big deal. Something just slightly, slightly different. Oh, what, I, I, what color is that? That's not red. Eh, whatever, it doesn't much matter as long as you know that you're getting the behavior that you're expecting to see. So in this case, Oh, I, and I'll have to fix that back up. Whatever it did, it ruined my uh, my graphic here. So the quit game will quit game credits, and then start game will take me to this other screen. So coming back to this main menu, let me put this let me put this coloring back. Oop! What in the world? Or maybe I do want a white up oh, there. I, yeah, game maker's funny sometimes with this kind of stuff. But anyway, so now we do have the three buttons. Let me put back the the splash screen into the right place here. Oops, how do I how do I do this here? Let me let me put the splash screen, let me draw, I don't know, draw, bring it up to the top. There we go. So let's see the game in full action right now. So there's my There's Oh, I want a controls tab. That's what it was. I wanted to have a a little room for the controls so you can see what you're how you're supposed to play the game 
something like that. So I'll add that real fast here as soon as I'm done talking about this. So the quick game will quit. Credits will bring me back to the credits. And then it'll bring me back to the main menu room one more time. And I, the nice thing is the fade is already there for us. We don't have to worry about that fade anyway. And so now, and then that, and then the start game will take me to this room. And then, of course, the quit game will quit the game. So let me just set up one more thing here. Let me duplicate the hub world. And I will call it controls room. And it's going to be very similar to that, to that other thing. And for right now, I'm not going to worry about the a, a button to come back. You guys have been doing enough. If you know, of course, put a button in there if you need to. Uh, but for now, right now, control room, and I'm just going to change the background color slightly again, just so that I don't know why it's supposed to come in as a red, but it's not. Oh, it's coming as white, but with a I don't even. Remember. That's okay. There we go. Just I just wanted it to be a darker red, something so it's a little different. And so now you will see that's our controls room, and it's the same basic idea for the play button. So we're going to duplicate that and call it the controls controls button. And then what do I want to do here? And you go, okay, I'll, I'll change start game to controls with a T, I promise. And what do I want to do here? I want to go to the controls room. And so then everything will just kind of go immediately to that. And I got to make sure I put it in the room. And then I got to make sure, at least at this point, so we got four separate rooms going already. Now this is the tricky part here. What object is this? This is the, the play button. This is the control. Of, this is credits. We'll bring that over here. Quit game. And I'll say I would want the controls kind of near the play. If I'm going to select, if I'm going to be the one doing this, now I can make this a little, you know, if I'm going to be the one setting all this up here. And again, not the, not my finest work because I'm not meant. It's not meant to. But now I have the four separate buttons. Oh, I keep forgetting about the stupid. I, I put back. I put the main menu back or the splash screen back way too fast here. And I got to speed this thing up anyway. And you guys can tinker. Okay, so then there we go. So there's our four different our different ways about doing things. You know, the credits will take you back here. I put my name up one more time just to make sure you know testing this thing over and over and over again that's what that's what testers do and so that and then of course I can start the game but then this was the one with the control room and it takes me to here so I'm in a good place so then the, the final parts of this is to set up all the little special effects and once I do that I'm going to set up the controls tab or the control like a little button to return me back to the, the main menu again so let's take a look at setting that up and then we can call it a day so while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to add a group tab here for the splash screen. <laughs> and then here I'm going to move over the, the fade out, the specific fade out effect for the splash screen. And so then we can kind of minimize this and kind of move this around and we can kind of, let me make sure I don't do, there we go. So that, so you can kind of get a, you start get a, bit, a better feeling for your resources. And we still need these, and we're going to use these, but uh, we'll find a place for those eventually. So I'm going to duplicate this fade out splash screen effect here. Duplicate that. And then I'm going to move this into the main menu. The hard part is getting it to do. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to call this fade out. Uh, fade out to quit. So this is going to be for the quit game button. Instead of quitting immediately, it's going to do a fade out. And so in this case, it goes, okay, what do I want to do? I have all this extra code. Again, I'm not going to go through all of this. You can fix this up how you see fit for how you want to fade out. But then, like in this case, we don't have any other thing. This is where the code is for what do I want to do when the fade out has finished. And in this case, this is where I want to do the game end. So I've, you know, it only takes a little bit of work here to figure out, okay, all of this kind of can stay for this fade effect because the fade is going to be the same no matter what I want to do. It's kind of just a matter of what do I want to do. And we could, we, could, we could probably move this into an alarm or something like that to make it a little easier to understand or put a big comment here and go, this is where the, you know, this is where, and maybe I can do that here since we're going to maybe be copying this over and over and over again. I put a comment, this is what to do. When the fade is complete and so just that's just to say that and so in here and go I want to end the game when this occurs and now all I want to do when I come back here is in the, the quit game button itself 
instead of ending the game directly, I want to create an object of that type. And I did, and they've changed things, and they always seem to, you know, so I want to just make sure I create. And it doesn't matter, I guess it doesn't kind of matter here, but I'm like, okay, what do I want to do? And it doesn't matter where I create it, it's going to be an invisible object. Uh, in what layer? I guess I'll just put instances, and that ties into the layer here in Game Maker, over here. Okay, and then this other thing, what kind of object do I want? This is where I want this fade, and it'll fill in for me as best as I can. I want the fade out to quit object, and then now there's this new thing, and I don't know what this is, bear struct, and I don't think we need, I think it's a an optional parameter anyway. I think the star means it's an optional. So let's try it out. And if we have that working, then we basically have all the fade outs working. We just have to create the, the specific buttons, uh, the, the create the specific effects. And like as a developer, I could go one step further with that, but I'm not going to, to create like a, a base class for that. I'm not gonna do that today. But you can see here when I put, do quit game, nothing, oops. It did not do that. So let's see what uh, let's see what I did wrong. Okay, so I guess I didn't technically do anything wrong. Those of you who are probably already, you know, me trying to think and talk and do at the same time. It can get a little tricky trying to keep all your ducks in a row. So I really didn't do anything wrong. This object it exists. I tried debugging this and all of the jazz that comes with that. So when I qu uh, click the quit game button. You go, oh, nothing's happening. So you click it a few times, whatever. But you wait five, six, seven, eight, however many seconds it is. And then it goes away because the code is there. You know, the, the, the fade out to quit part of this implies that there's a countdown timer before it just does whatever it needs to do. So this time before fading can just be a zero. If we just change this to a zero, it'll fade immediately. At least it should in theory. Uh, and I haven't te this I have not tested out, but I, just to show you guys the mistakes that come along the way. And as you guys know from my any of my previous videos, most times I have no problem showing you mistakes that occur or just lapses in your <laughs> lapses in your understanding of your logic because that's going to happen no matter how experienced you are. So now when I click quick game, there it goes, and then the game ends immediately. So I just have to change this to a zero for any of the other fade out effects that I want. Uh, and then, uh, and then I can do whatever I need to do. Okay, so let's you know I could pick whichever one. I'm going to duplicate this one because this is the you know this is the one that we're kind of working with. So I'm going to say fade out to credits. So we'll have the one that goes back to the credit screen, and it's going to be very similar, right? So let me just drag this up, I guess, just to kind of keep everything together here. So my fade up to credits. I don't want to, I don't need to touch any of this again, but I do need to, to change where to what do I do when the fade has completed. And this is a room go to, and then back to the credits again. So let me just, uh, what is the room name? It's called Splash Screen. Splash Screen Room. And since we're already kind of doing this stuff here, uh, and then, oh yeah, and then the button itself for the credits, I'll call it Splash Screen. Oh, just hold on here. Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm, let me borrow the... Oh, no, I don't have to worry about borrowing anything here. I can just go into the... Uh, or, sorry, for the, the button class itself here. I can go into the quit game. I can borrow... The, I'm just going to borrow this one. And I'm going to go into the credits here. And I'm going to do room go to... Oops. It's going to change up with setting up this object of... And I'm sorry again for Game Maker making it like really challenging to figure out where the heck you are. And this is the fade out to credits part of this. And so now, you know, and now to do this for every one of the four buttons. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to duplicate this again. And so I'm going to do fade out to uh, controls button. I guess, I guess, no, that's the fade out itself. So here, room go to, what do I want to do here when I go to controls? Controls room. That's the only true difference here for at least for this code. Move this up here. And then for the object itself, for the controls button itself, this is replaced with that, and we say fade out to controls. And then the final one here is fade out to uh, get, uh, play the actually play the, playing the game. Fade out to play game. Uh, so duplicate fade out to hub world.
And so in the step event here, room go to, what did I call it, hub world something? Uh, hub world room. That's the change there. And then in the control, the button itself for that, go to play button. And then this gets replaced with that. And what did I, again, I called it hub room. Hub world, hub world room. Okay, so now let's try that out. Let's just see. We might have to fix something up along the way because it's tedious and, and I got a little distracted in my thinking while I was even trying to do it. So here's the main, here's my splash screen that goes to the main menu. Everybody's happy. There we go. There's the come back out. And there's the come back in. And so now if I want to go to the credits, there's my fade out and there's my fade back in. So, okay, so the credits is working. And there's that, and then boom, that's back here. So okay, the credits button works like I expect it to. Let's do quick game one more time just to make sure I didn't ruin anything. Okay, so that works. And now the other two buttons. The one we don't necessarily have to fix up for this video is the, uh, the actually playing the game. So if I do play game and it fades out and it takes me to uh oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it right. So let's see. Okay, so what did I do wrong here for the the quit to or fade out to hub world uh, play button? Interesting. So I create this hub world room. Oh, hub world. You're probably already screaming at me. I want the, instead of hub world room, I want the fade. That's so. Yeah, of course it's working exactly as I coded it. Fade out to hub world. Okay, so sorry for that. Let me uh, let me get rid. Let me move this over one more time here, just so that just to save you guys an extra couple seconds. You guys don't need to see that over and over and over again since we know it works. So we'll bring back the main menu room. There it is. So now credits works, quit game works, and then so now when I do start game, there it goes, and then it brings up. Okay, right now there's nothing else in there right now, but it, so it takes me to the hub world room with the correct coloring. And then now, real quick here, do it one more time. And when I do the controls room, it should take me to that and should be a, a little more red of a tinge, at least for right now. There's my fade out, and there's my boom. There it is. And so we're pretty good to go. Everything else can kind of get filled in as we as we you know continue forth. Uh, if you really want to, you could add a button in the controls room. And I guess you know I could do that kind of quickly. Uh, so well, I can set up a group, and I can call it controls room. Or control, just uh, controls, yeah, just uh, control screen or something like that. So I've got my main menu, I've got my splash screen, I've got my control screen. And so just for right now, I can duplicate and I can, even though it's a main menu button, I guess I could just steal and borrow that and just duplicate and just drag it down here into that, into here, and get it into the control screen. And I can just call it a controls return button. I can I can spell I can see it <coughs> excuse me there it is and so in this case all I'm doing here just just for now here if you want to play with it but we're gonna have to set it up later anyway is just say return to main and when I do press it I want to make sure I go just uh, instead of this instead of doing all this extra or you could if you wanted but I don't want to I don't want to belay this and I just want to see it room go to and then they just take me back to the main menu room for now and I will fix it up. I just want to I want to get to a, a good place where I can think before I progress with the next part. You won't notice it, but I will. Oops, I got to put that in the control room anyway. So I got to start this over. So I got to drag that button into oops, into the wrong layer. Oops, into the instances layer. Put that button right in the middle of the screen somehow, pretty close to the middle anyway. So then there we go here, and then I have my controls tab. That takes me into here, and then there's my return to main. I click that, and then I'm back to where I need to go. So yeah, so we have we everything but the hub world can return or whatever it needs to do. Credits will return, quick game will it, you know, quit immediately. So you have everything you need up to this moment. So then here I should be able to just drag in that fade in base class into this control room. And I should be able to do the same thing with the hub world. 
just to have that in there and just say when the game first start when the room oops it does this every time when the room first starts up i can fade you know use that fade effect and i don't have to worry about anything else and just to say here now you know when i when i do the start game it should do the fade out and then it should do a fade in and it does there we go so that works and if it did it for that it will do it for the controls room too so then it would just be a matter of uh, fixing up real quick then when I click that button to set up so that it fades out before it heads back to the main menu. So there's the fade out, there's the fade in, and then when I click this it shouldn't be just an immediate, it should just be one of those things where it returns me back. So I want to be able to do a fade out uh, to make, I guess I do duplicate one of these guys, drag it down into the control screen, and say call this fade out, uh, fade out to main menu. And so in this case, when I click this button, now instead of doing the room go to like I did before, I hopefully I can, hopefully I don't have too much copy pasting. Yep, there we go. So now I can do fade out to main menu here. So this will be what happens when I click that button. So it'll create this here, which goes, okay, you know, it'll start immediately to go back. And then when it hits, this will take me back to the main menu room. I gotta make sure I'm... And that should cover everything that we need to do for this video and everything you need for your assignment if you're in my class. So just real quick then again here. So there's this. So there's my con so I do the control screen, fade out, fade back in. When I click, fades out, fades back in to the main menu. The credits screen does the same thing where it goes to there. And then, you know, waits long enough. And then it comes back. Fade out, fade in, and then with this start game here, it does the fade out, it does the fade in. And then that's it. So we're done. So thanks for sticking it out with me as always. So of course we're going to be pushing into starting this hub world. So the whole idea, for those of you who are just kind of halfway following along and not in my class, the hub world is going to be a place where you set up a bunch of mini games. There's going to be like characters walking around and stuff like that, and you're going to try to set up, and your goal is to win all the mini games. So that you can reach the final level is probably be like an adventure game or something like that and to beat the game outright so you have to beat all the little mini games to get to the final stuff here but thanks for uh sticking it out thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments of course please comment below people usually find some good stuff to comment on and uh, i'd love to hear about it so thanks everybody uh, we'll talk to you soon have a great day see you in a future video